Hello and welcome to this AIM video on setting up math channels in the Race Studio Analysis software to be able to look at GPS data and finding trends in your driving. Now this video is designed to accompany another video that was published at the same time that's looking at how to analyze those trends, but this video is designed to be able to show how we set those up in the first place to be able to get to that particular point of analysis. So I'm going to open up uh, Race Studio Analysis and right now the view that I have here with the channels on the left is a typical view that you often see uh, for people who may have a solo or a solo two. Uh, we've got speed, we've got GPS longitudinal, which is a great indicator of driver inputs down being deceleration, up being acceleration, and then time distance. But thanks to a number of the seminars that have been created by the AIM Sports uh, folks in the US with their um, presenters, we've been able to look at um, and learn about a number of different areas um, of analysis using math channels. So I want to be able to show you some of that today that's helped been able to identify if you can mimic some of the driver inputs that you may have um, with an advanced setup that you don't actually have with just GPS only. So uh, let's look at that. Up here at the top, we've got um, math channels. And if I click on that, this box appears that allows us to be able to add math channels into our sessions. Right now you can identify that there are no channels in this box here for either of the sessions, but if I click in general there's the default set that's been created by AIM. I personally haven't used these, but I know that some people find these particularly useful. But what I want to do is I want to be able to set up the channels associated with the GPS data to be able to analyze uh, some information. What I've done is I've taken the formulas um, from all of the seminars that I've been to um, or from conversations I've had um, with uh, people at AIM and created the four that I want to be able to use um, for my analysis for GPS. I want to see when the brakes being applied and released. I want to see when the throttles being applied and released. I want to be able to see how hard um, that brake pedal is being applied or um, oftentimes this is referred to as brake aggressiveness and I want to be able to see um, the trace of the braking in relation to the GPS view, which is this GPS longitudinal view. To get that into the, uh, into the software, uh, first thing I need to do is I need to go here and I need to click on insert. And um, you'll see it says new channel. Pop up here to the three dots. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a brake on. That's the first one we're going to do. So I'm going to click OK. Now that channel name has been changed. I'm going to pop in here and I'm going to grab the formula. And this formula basically looks at, um, you know, has the car uh, decelerated um, at a certain force, which means it must be braking, which means it's basically been normalized to say that if you lifted or you got some friction from, um, from the tire um, in slowing the car down or there's some kind of gradient or slope on the track, let's take that variable out and just be able to identify if the car is braking aggressively enough to be able to trigger this variable, which is... Um, uh, this channel. So I'm going to paste the box, uh, the formula in here, uh, and then I'm just going to add in some variables that look at what the channel looks like um, in uh, Race Studio Analysis. So I'm going to go back to my um, area here and I want an on off switch. So basically, this is going to say, is the brake on or is it off? I can paste that into there. And then I'm also going to add in um, a 1.2 for the full scale and a zero for the bottom scale. This is basically saying if it's on, it's one, and if it's off, it's zero. The reason I'm doing 1.2 is that I would want just a little bit of room um, in the graph so that I can see the top of that and it makes the graph easier to read. That's all I need to do here in terms of setting it up and I'm going to click on OK. But one of the things you've noticed is that that hasn't, hasn't shown up yet in our channels analysis. So if I scroll up back to um, the math channel area, we can see it's here in the general box, but it's not in these settings. The general box is great because all of these channels will be here to be able to apply to any um, any session that you have that you want to put them in. Here I've got two empty boxes against my session so all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on there, I'm going to add it into the holding box or the waiting area and then I'm just going to pop it into each of these sessions like this. Then I'm going to click on OK. If I scroll down now you're going to notice that um, the break on function is now here and if I click on that variable you can now see that this shows when the brake has been applied and where the brake has been released. The reason that we got the 1.2 I was talking about earlier is that it just gives you a little room here on the chart to be able to see the top of the graph, which is something that I always uh, like in terms of how I view the data. So there's your break on or off, but um, we want to see the other variables, so we'll run through some of these other ones as well as we go forward. 
Um, feel free to fast forward if you don't want to see all four being set up, but I think it's useful um, sometimes to be able to see that sort of process and that uh, flow, especially as I'll share these formulas with you to be able to set these up in your own uh, setup. So again, back to the channel, back to general. Don't set them up in here uh, because you might actually close the session and need it later on and it's not there. So set them up in general, click on insert. We're gonna change the name of this one to throttle on. Uh, where are we? There we go. Um, we're going to go back to here. We're going to pick up the formula. This is exactly the same as the brake, but it goes the other way, which is acceleration instead. Um, normalize to make sure that we're not taking into account, um, let's say, for example, running down the hill and, and the car slightly accelerating. This is based upon, you know, the force of the, the engine propelling the vehicle, um, uh, so to speak. I'm going to pop the uh, on-off variable um, into here, plus the, again, same 1.2. So I'm going to paste that one in there, the uh, uh, 1.2, and then pop in the zero, and I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to pop this into the waiting area. Oh, hello. Uh, that's already in there. So we're going to put the throttle on now. We're going to add that into the waiting area. And then we're going to go into here and we're going to add that one there. And we're going to add that one there. And then we're going to click on OK. Notice it's appeared here. We're going to click on OK. And there it is. So, <coughs> beg your pardon. So here you can see. Uh, that the uh, throttle is on and then the throttle is released and the brake is applied um, and so forth. So useful information. Now we want to be able to see um, the um, a little bit more analysis of the braking. So we're going to go back up here. Uh, we're going to go back to the general box. We're going to create a new channel and this one's going to be called um, GPS. Um, we'll call this yeah, GPS in So GPS, inverted longitudinal g-force. Um, and I'll explain what this means and what it looks like uh, as we go through. So that's the name. Um, we're gonna go back here and it is this one here. Uh, basically simple formula, this one, uh, that basically inverts the uh, GPS longitudinal information. So we're gonna paste that in there. We're gonna go back to um, our measure, which is uh, g-force measure. Um, but uh, we wanna be able to make sure that we can see it um, as g-force is in the system. We'll pop in here and say the scale needs to be two and zero. Now the scale here is representative of how much g-force uh, your car is producing. Most um, street cars and race cars uh, in club racing, those without aero may not be producing more than two g-forces at any given time. If you've got um, more advanced vehicles, uh, formula cars, you may get more. You can just adjust the scale. This is just making sure that it shows up nicely uh, on the chart. So I'm gonna click on OK, uh, but we're gonna go back here and we're gonna go into the general setting and we're gonna put this in the waiting area. Then we're gonna pop it into each of the sessions like this. We're gonna click on OK. It appears here and so now we have um, a um, GPS inverse longitudinal, which interestingly, we still have GPS longitudinal acceleration created. We had that at the beginning. And you may notice that this here mimics this here, but with a slightly smaller scale. But at the same time, it's, it's a complete inverse or mirror of this, depending on how you set up the scale. So this is useful because it potentially mirrors how a brake trace may look in terms of the smoothness of the brake application that is there. The last one we're going to add um, in this scenario is we're going to go back to general and we're going to create um, brake speed. And this is a great feature uh, that uh, I learned um, uh, from the AIM seminar from someone called Jeremy Lucas and I'll link uh, to that seminar so you can go and look at uh, more information um, on the uh, aggressiveness of the brake which also mirrors the slope here. If this slope is gentle the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the aggressiveness is, is less than if it's sharp and aggressiveness is more. And I'll show you that as we go through. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm just gonna add in the final four minutes, which if I'm not doing 20 of these channels, uh, otherwise this should be the longest video ever. I'm gonna pop these in here. Um, and I'm gonna say unit zero and minus two here. And, oh, minus 12, I did that last time as well. So I'm um, gonna click on uh, OK. And let's just go back to here for the last time uh, as part of this video. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna say uh, 
brake speed and we're going to pop this into the waiting area uh, drop it into I don't know if this is called the waiting area it just feels that's a useful name for it and there we have brake speed that's there we're going to click on OK it's now available here and now you can see that information is available to you in this chart overall so all of the variables are now um, where you need them to be and it depends on what you want to be able to analyze the last thing I want to be able to show as part of this video and then the analysis will be in the later one is to be able to look at how to get this configured so that you want to be able to read this how you like uh, to be able to see this data so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off GPS longitude and acceleration for now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these into an order which I particularly like so um, you can do that here with the sort channels bu uh, function these are now measures the ones that we've created uh, on these charts so they're just like anything else you have as part of your measures list that you can work through and I personally in my view like speed then I like throttle then I like analysis of the brake so it's in quite a good order that it's here if you want to move these you can move them down you can move them up but what I want to do here is I actually want to look at um, uh, the um, inverse longitudinal G in terms of the smoothness of the transition and then I want to look at the aggressiveness uh, of the brake pedal so I'm going to click on apply and exit it's going to move these around just a little bit to be able to see um, what's going on and then now we're in a position where we can start analyzing the data so um, to have a look at the analysis check out the other video that we have and again I'll make sure it's linked and it's there but here if we just wanted to have a quick assessment to know what we've actually set up in terms of driver inputs let's just have a look at this section here driver is losing time by about three tenths in this area here if we scroll up then to be able to see what's happening in speed there's a big delta in speed and we can identify that uh, there's some variables now which are here the first is that this brake on has been applied for longer and even though the blue lap has lifted off the brake and maybe tapped it again but the brake has been released you can see that the transition path here is slightly smoother the brake is held for longer that is here but the brake force is about the same that is there but the big variable here in terms of loss is not only overslowing, but there's a big lift in the throttle here which results in the delta of speed here and time here so interesting to see just from the GPS data so uh, enjoy the other video in terms of analyzing it I will make sure that all of these uh, math channels are available for you to be able to copy and paste into your overall setup uh, big thanks to Roger Cadell and Jeremy Lucas for uh, helping me learn how to use some of these sort of features and with that um, drop a comment if you uh, if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe so thanks very much and uh, happy working with your data